the Wildlife Conservation Society who work in the same wildlife and wild places around the world. We have scientists and eco guards working in the field and zookeepers working right here at home to protect a wide range of life. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to point out the animals as we approach them, but I'm going to need your help. Scientists and zookeepers with good observation skills to learn about animal behaviors and to ensure their health. Let me know what you see and please share it with the other guests. And we have now traveled over 7,000 miles and arrived in Asia, be on the lookout for animals. Now Asia is a continent known for its vast deer population and its deer diversity. And all the deer and the antelope seem to have went to the other side, so we're, we're going to see them in, I will say, about another 8 to 10 minutes. In the meantime, here is one of our zookeepers explaining this beautiful meadow to us. Her name is Michelle. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm part of the Wild Asia Keeper Team. We call this area Kanha Meadow, where we care for about 40 Barasinga deer, 15 Axis deer, 10 Black Buck, and a pair of Munchak. We start our day by checking on all the animals, making sure they are healthy, behaving normally, and safe. Sometimes, fawns and calves are born overnight. Newborns are given a neonatal exam, which includes weighing, vaccination, and tagging for identification purposes. While the animals are in the meadow, we prepare their nighttime holding areas so that they have a safe and clean place to spend the night. Yes, and the animals that Michelle just described, we will see them later on our tour. But these small huts we're about to pass right now represent a very interesting WCS conservation story. And that reddish brown deer that you're looking at right there is an Indian munchak deer. There's also another one to the right by the fence, also known as the barking deer, because they will make a bark-like sound once they sense a predator. Farmers in Indonesia live closely with wild animals, like elephants, which we will see shortly. WCS field staff work with local leaders and farmers in Indonesia to come up with the Crop Protection Unit. This unit created many different ways for farming to continue in close proximity of wild animals. One strategy was to soak ropes in chili powder and place them around the crops. Elephants do not like chili and leave the farms alone, allowing the farmer and the animals to share the habitat peacefully. Yes, now we all know that when a species is we all know that a species that is extinct no longer exists, like the dinosaur the dodo. Now the next animal was on the verge of extinction. In fact, the Mongolian wild horse, or the Przewalski horse, was extinct in nature and they can only be found in captivity. But recently there have been some reintroductions of the Mongolian wild horses in areas of Mongolia and China from our North American and Asian zoos. And here we have our entire herd of Mongolian wild horses. You're back. Aren't they beautiful? The Mongolian wild horses. Now the Bronx Zoo received its first animals in 1902 and to date we've had about 50 Mongolian wild horse foals born right here at the Bronx Zoo. And as you're looking at it, I'm pretty sure you notice the difference between these horses and our domestic ones. One, they have shorter legs and a stockier build. They also have an erect mane. They're missing the forelock. That's a piece of mane that drapes over the forehead and eyes of our domestic horses. And here's one of our animal experts to speak about these beautiful horses. I'm Jonathan Slatt, and I'm the Russia and Northeast Asia coordinator for the Wildlife Conservation Society. I believe that wildlife has a place on this earth. And my job is to find practical solutions that allow people and wildlife to thrive together. Petrovalsky's horse went extinct in the wild in the 1960s. And on a recent trip to Kazakhstan, I thought about the ongoing and successful efforts in that country to bring these horses back to the Central Asian steppe. The world needs happy stories to watch the impossible become possible and to see hope restored. That's what's happening today with Pere Jawalski's horse. Yes, folks, now this upper meadow here is just an extended area where we allow our horses to have free range, graze, frolic, and have a great time. So here at the Bronx, we do offer them plenty of room to run around and do just what they want to do. Again, our Mongolian wild horses. And as we slowly proceed up this hill, we're now on the lookout for two vulnerable and endangered species. And believe me when I tell you, one is very large. We're talking about the brow antler deer and the gower. Now the brow antler deer get their name from the curved shape of the male deer antlers. Currently classified as vulnerable, these deer are continuing to lose their wild space. And in many places, herds must resort to feeding on crops and their natural habitat has been taken over for farming. And believe me, you will not need binoculars to see our next animal. They are the world's largest cattle. Again, we're talking about the gower. Now males can weigh over 2,000 pounds as much as a small car. They stand 6 feet tall and 10 feet long. And with their large size and impressive horns, a male gower can fight off just about any animal, and that includes a tiger. 
or it threatens these huge animals is the loss of their Asian habitats and diseases that they do catch from other domestic cattle. And we're now entering in the meadow. We want to look out for the brown antler deer and the gower. Now when you do see the brown antler deer, they will not have antlers because these are the females and the females do not have antlers. And the reason we have them out today because it is a ladies day out. Now as we come up further in the meadow, we're going to be on the lookout for the brown antler deer and the gower. Now normally at this time of day, the gower no, normally go to the extreme right side of the exhibit. And I think I see some horns from here once we pass this little oversized tree stump there. Yes, we're going to see some sitting way over there. Looks like they're looking at the train too. <laughs> and I wish that they were closer so we could really appreciate their great size. But they're over that area. Now once we come around this bend, if they're staying over there, and we go to the back of this exhibit, we'll probably get a better and a closer look at the gal with the world's largest cattle. Now from this distance, look at their horns if you can. If those horns are curved, then those are our females. If they're pointing up, those are our males. Now they also have a baby gal with them. Up there goes some of our brow antler deer back to the fence over to the right of the gal, sitting back there relaxing. Now they do have a baby getting back to the gal. They do have a baby gal with them. She's about six months old. And when she grows up, she's going to look just like them. And she's finally starting to sprout some horns. And there's some more of our female brow antler deer. Again, it is a ladies day out. And as we're about to test our scientific and observation skills, you might be hearing a noise coming from the concrete jungle rather than the Asian one. You know, it's easy to forget that the Bronx Zoo sits in the heart of our urban environment. And the noise that we're hearing behind us now is the traffic from the Bronx River Parkway. And this very large fence that we're approaching right now is used to reduce the noise of that city traffic because we do want to keep our animals calm. Now I'm going to ask everyone to please remain seated as we're about to round this corner because we are now on the lookout for a tiger. Now tiger stripes provide excellent camouflage so they're very often difficult to spot. They're so secretive that even our professional researchers have a hard time finding them. Now adult tigers normally live alone in the wild which is why you are going to see one of them at the exhibit at a time and we are now on the lookout for Josie. He's our seven year old male Siberian tiger. Look for that beautiful orange color and those black stripes and if you do see it before myself do not be shy. Shout them out to the other guests. Now they're very solitary animals, very elusive. They like to be left alone. They don't like to be bothered. And that's why you'll only see one at the exhibit at a time. But we're going to keep our eyes peeled. He's right. There he goes. Running. There he is. There he is. There's Joseph. He must have heard me. I heard you. There he is. Our seven-year-old male Siberian tiger. Now, tigers hunt a variety of animals, but they prefer wild pigs and medium-sized deer. Now, typically, a tiger will gorge itself on a fresh kill, eating as much as 40 pounds of meat at one time. Now, just think that's the equivalent of you and I eating 160 hamburgers in one sitting.